Here, we will show you how Simex can be used along with a physics simulator to simulate your entire cyber physical system. The example system we're going to use is this. It's a water heater connected to a control board. That control board is running Wixworks and some control applications. And I use a serial port to instruct it to do things. The water heater has a thermometer that reports values to the control board and the control board in turn can turn on and off and vary the power of the heating element in the water heater. This is the simulation architecture of the demo. Essentially on the left we have the computer system which is a complete little computer system. It has an AD converter reading the values from the thermometer in the physics model and there's a DA converter sending digital values as analog values to the physics model. The physics model is running off of its own clock, so it's actually an independent unit in the SIMIC simulator. And we also have some support for fault injection added to both the actuator, i.e. the um, actual heating element, and the thermometer, i.o. the sensor in the physics model. To start the simulation, we run a script that brings up a checkpoint of a booted and configured water heater and which will also do some automation to help us get started. So there it is, target system booted and ready to be used. It consists of the controller board as we said and a separate water heater model. We can see the display panel for the water heater controller where you have the power indicator i.e. how much is the software actually driving the water heater and the display where the software can show whatever it likes, in particular the temperature of the water. We also have a panel that shows the state of the physics model, including how much water is left in the kettle and the current water temperature, as well as what it thinks the current heater power going out is. So let's start the simulation. And our script automatically started the temperature display task on the control system serial port which resulted in the current temperature being read and displayed in the display. So if we continue simulation again, I will type the magic command to make this very primitive water heater actually heat some water. I would not like to have this at home, but it's a nice demo. And here it runs, you can see how quickly time is evolving in the simulation since we're hyper simulating when things are idle. And we boil, oh, uh, Okay, we managed to burn the water heater. We didn't just boil the water, we managed to burn the entire system. So, well, I guess what this shows is how you can use a simulator to test control software in the context of a physical system and find out even when it's not behaving quite as intended. So, let's go back and investigate what's going on. And to do that, we can just quit the simulation and start over with a new, fresh and unburnt water heat. For the analysis part, we'll start Simix using a second script that actually helps us understand what goes on with a small bit of additional scripting. So we're back where we started. We run forward once. We start the temperature display task just like before. And now this script also starts the boiler task. And now we see the water boiling off. So let's go and see what is going on here. First of all, let's check the status of what exactly is going on inside the physics model. Because you see 99 degrees here, 100 degrees here. So if you look at the water heater, I'm going to check. On this information, we can tell that right now the current water temperature is really 372.97 degrees Kelvin, i.e. almost 100 degrees Celsius, not quite. So with rounding, this one is correct. And if truncation, this one is correct. So let's see what the software thinks is going on. As I said, we attach the debugger. And let's see if our little boiler task is running right now. No, it's not. And the quickest way to get into it is just to put a breakpoint on something like the main task of the boiler, which is here, and then we'll put in a breakpoint in the core of the control loop. And now we run forward until the next time 
the controller it activates. Oh, there it is. So what's going on then? What's the current temperature? Well, this seems to align pretty well with what the physics model said was the state of the world. So why doesn't it stop? Because it's boiling and it has the right temperature, but the check in the control loop isn't quite right. We're looking for exactly 100 degrees Celsius, and in practice the boiling point is you know, just a tad smaller than that. So that explains why we just keep on boiling and never turn off, because the code is not quite correctly written based on a faulty understanding of the world. So let's see if we this is correct. So if we reduce the boiling point of water to 372 degrees Kelvin, or rather the parameter for boiling point in the program, and keep running, what will happen? Ah something much more beneficial. It says water is now boiling, so the heater turned off. And if we go back and check the state, we can see that, yes, power is off, and the water temperature is slowly decreasing. So basically, this shows that our program was broken in the sense that it had the wrong understanding of how the world works. So I guess this means we need to implement a smarter version of the boiler program. So let's try that in the next test. We quit the simulation and we test our improved program which checks if water boils at 99 degrees instead of 100. So just like before, we bring up the checkpoint, we start a temperature task, start a new boiler version 2 program, water starts boiling and it shuts down. So that looks like a correct boiler, right? However, things can happen in the real world, and among those is that we actually move the boiler up on a mountain. So let's see how this one behaves when we do that. To do that, we activate high altitude mode in the physics model, and we run again. So let's start the boiler version 2. We start boiling. And now we see the old problem again, where we're basically steaming away all the water. And the reason for this is that as we move to higher altitude, the boiling point of water actually decreases. This program was perfectly safe at ground level, but up in the mountains it wasn't and would, you know, once again burn our water heater. And this shows how simulation can be used to test different varieties and different scenarios, which are kind of hard to reproduce in the lab. In this setup, we could try, you know, 2,000 meters, 8,000 meters, whatever we'd like, without having to go climb Mount Everest and set up a lab somewhere really inconvenient. So what did we actually see in this demo? Well, we saw a physics simulator connected to a digital system simulator basically showing how we can simulate a complete cyber physical system as a unit. We use checkpointing of both the physics model and the semi-computer model to quickly get to an interesting point. We exploited fast forwarding of time in the simulator to quickly simulate scenarios that actually took quite a while in the real world. We automated our tests using Simic scripts. We use the Simic source code debugger to check up what's going on and also to actually change some software parameters on the fly. And we used fault injection to very external conditions to test the software under various conditions without having to build complicated labs in the real world.